Okay, folks, here we are with a Ford F-150 1992 4x4 5.0 302 uh, engine, uh, a.k.a. V8. Um, this inform some of this information will be good from 90 on up through 95 and 96. What the customer's main complaint was, was that he had extreme loss of power. Engine was, was uh, idling and running rough. Also, uh, it would not pass emissions how to check engine light on. Now the engine itself has 222,000 miles and some of you may go, oh man, that's a lot, but 222,000 miles for a 92 Ford 302 uh, 5.0 is not a lot at all, especially if it's been taken care of. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we went ahead and approached the diagnosis of it. First of all, we did take it for a test drive and confirmed that it was running horribly. So then from there, uh, since our check engine light did not give us very much information at all, what we did was we went ahead and we started pulling the spark plugs. Now the spark plugs were actually burnt pretty even and were worn uh, really nice, even though they were completely wore out and gone, as well as the cap and rotor. The cap and rotor were uh, completely uh just gone as what i i say blasted is actually the simple term that i use the cap and rotor were blasted the spark plugs are blasted and so it was obviously time to change them out however uh for as bad as it was running bad spark plugs and cap and rotor probably wouldn't have been the only thing so while having the spark plugs out i went ahead and i used uh my compression tester and i compression tested every every uh cylinder and starting with cylinder number one and what I got was extremely low compression the proper specifications for this engine uh, for compression in cylinder is between anywhere between 130 to 135 now that's the simple 4302 there's also the 4302 HO or the 5.0 GT and the compression for that is uh, around 100 to 140 to 145 pounds this engine's compression came in at 92 and 90 pounds in each cylinder but and so some people may say well that's a wore out engine however if you look at the consistency of the pattern in the numbers cylinder one we've got 92 with 90 and 90 and two and three and then cylinder four 92 and then cylinder five on the driver's side same thing on up through cylinder eight it's the same pattern of numbers and the pressure is consistent and there's not a large variance between 90 and 92 so that actually what what this what this information tells me is that the piston rings and cylinder walls and all that other good stuff those are actually okay and that is not where we're losing our compression at the head gasket is fine so we're not going to be losing compression there so at that point that gives me enough evidence to go ahead and check the timing chain on it and as you can see that's exactly what we're getting ready to do here i've got the uh i've got the fan shroud out I've got the fan clutch out, I've got the alternator out, I've got the air conditioner out, the water, uh, sorry, the power steering pump out, and the main bracket to hold those two components to the engine out, um, as well as I've actually already went ahead and loosened my uh, crankshaft bolt with, uh, with Bertha, my air gun. So, and uh, just to kind of show you, I saved my customers money, for example, the AC compressor here, if you notice, I've got it unbolted and disconnected from the engine, but I do not have it fully disconnected from the system. In other words, I did not discharge it. I just very carefully move things aside, pick it up, and lay it over, making sure not to kink or bend any of my lines. And so long as you can do that, you can save 60 bucks worth of Freon right there, as well as, as the power steering pump. Instead of completely disconnecting it and removing it, all I did was I left it connected to the bracket, I left it connected to the system, and I just simply removed my bracket, turned it, made sure I'm not kinking any of my lines, and then uh, go ahead and set it aside. That way you don't have to open up the system, and then you don't have to spend the time to uh, bleed it out and whatnot, and you save yourself and the customer uh, a lot of money there. So... Now, now that we've got all that done and out, next thing to do is go ahead and drain it. Uh, I'm going to remove my radiator because I don't want to damage it while I'm down inside of here working on the timing. And as you can see right here, here's your water pump, okay, and then gasket, and then timing cover, and then gasket, and then engine block. And one of the most common things on these Fords, let me tell you, if you're going to do this job yourself, if you have one of these Fords with high mileage, okay, you've got this bolt and stud right here and you've got this bolt and stud right here you also have two long bolts and studs here 
And when you get leaks in your timing cover and water pump gaskets like you have here and here, that means that it leaks inside and onto the threads inside of here. So these guys right here, these guys right here like to break on you. So when you're going to do this job, you might as well go ahead and prepare ahead of time, even if you don't need to do it, to uh, drill and tap these bolts and these studs out of the engine block because they'll break here or they'll break here. If they break here, you're actually lucky because you've got about this much left to grab onto and go ahead and pull it out. But if they break here, well, that's your engine block. So you're going to have to do some drilling and tapping there. So, so there you go, folks. If you have any questions uh, about Fords or are there 5.0 liter engines? Uh, get a touch. Uh, get get a hold of me through YouTube. Uh, it's linked to my phone, so I'm pretty I'm pretty good at uh, answering your questions back. All right, go out there and get at it. Uh, good luck to all you backyardigans, and let's save some money.